Okay, so I've spent enough time with the iPhone 6, I feel like, uh, to give you guys a decent little list of tips and tricks. Now these should help anyone that's new to an iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, or even just iOS 8. So, let's get started. So first up, if you go to settings, then Siri, then turn allow Hey Siri on. When the phone is plugged in, you can say, Hey Siri, what's the weather like? And Siri will actually respond to you without you having to push the button to bring her up. Again, though, this only works when the phone is plugged in. Probably something to do with them trying to save battery life. While on topic of Siri, if you tap the Siri button when in a message and say whatever you want, it actually will start to write this as you're saying it, as opposed to you having to wait until it is done processing it to see what you were typing. If you double tap the home button, it'll bring everything on the screen down to make it easier to use with one hand. Now this is double tapping as opposed to double actually clicking, which brings you to your normal multitasking screen. Next up, if you're in a message and you tap details, you can see all of the attachments, all the videos, and all of the photos that you and that person have ever sent to each other, which just makes them easier to get to. Also in messaging, um, now it has this neat little guessing feature where it tries to guess what you're trying to say uh, based on conversations you've had with that person, the way you type, etc. And you can just tap them in order to insert them into the conversation. If you hold down on that, you can also pull down to hide those suggestions if you don't want to look at them, and obviously pull back up to bring them back. You can also hold down on the microphone on the top right and record an audio recording to send to someone. You could tap the X to delete it, the arrow to send it, and of course the play button to just play it back. Now when you receive an incoming message, if you just pull down on it, it'll actually allow you to quickly reply to it without having to go back into the app. In the camera, if you tap somewhere and you pull up on the side or down on the side, you can actually adjust the brightness really quickly before you take your photo. In the camera as well, we have a timer that you can tap, set it to a certain amount of time, and then push the shutter button to get a countdown before it takes the photos. Convenient for selfies, perhaps. To quickly view the desktop version of a site, tap in the URL bar, and then pull down and tap Request Desktop Site. In email, you can now swipe to the right to mark something as read, or swipe to the left to get other options, including archiving, flagging, and tapping more, which gives you the option to flag them, mark them as red, move to junk, and a few other options as well. Also inside a message, you can tap the flag button and hit notify me. And what this does is it actually will send a notification anytime anyone responds to this thread. Also in mail, if you are starting a new message or composing a message, you can drag it down in order to kind of minimize it, do other things, and then tap it to bring it back. If you go to settings, general usage, battery usage, uh, a neat little feature they added that is similar to the one on Android is you can see what apps are actually using the most of your battery and then decide whether or not you really need them. It'll also give you battery life suggestions. Double tapping the home button to get to your normal multitasking screen also brings up your recent contacts as well as your favorites. You can swipe through these and then tap one to do certain actions like call them, message them, etc. If you pull down the notification from the top, uh, you now have widgets in here which you can edit by scrolling down to the bottom and tapping the edit button. You can then tap which ones you want to add, uh, remove ones you don't, and even move them around as well. If you want more info on this, you can click the link below to be taken to my video on exactly how to use all of this. In the settings as well, Apple has added a section that you can see the location access that each app has. You can also go in here and tap one of them, and then decide whether you want it to always have location access, never, and sometimes only when the app is in use. If the app suggestions are annoying, you can go to settings, iTunes, and App Store, and then just uncheck My Apps and App Store, and you won't have to see them anymore. And finally, if you go to Find My iPhone, um, you can tap Send Last Location, and this means that if the phone ever is about to die, it will automatically send its location to Apple right before it does, which could be handy for finding a stolen or lost phone. There you go, some quick tips to help you with iOS 8. If there are any other videos you'd like to see me do while I still have the iPhone 6, please leave them in the comments below. Um, reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, or Google Plus, at The Unlocker. And um, as always, thanks for watching.